Well, howdy there, Internet people. It's Dana again, and today you're at Research Road. This is a weekly series where we go through science and tech news with a bit of dry humor. Then we do a dive into a science topic, and we close out by answering some questions from y'all. Today is the 12th of August, 2025, and on this date in 1981, IBM unveiled the IBM Personal Computer. The initial price was a little more than $1,500. Today is World Elephant Day. So, starting off with tech news, I have some gossipy tech news to start off with. Elon Musk threatened Apple with legal action because he believes Apple is showing favoritism to open AI. Sam Altman responded on Elon's social media site, saying Elon was making, quote, a remarkable claim given what I've heard allege that Elon does to manipulate X to benefit himself and his own companies and harm his competitors and people he doesn't like. Girls, girls, you're both pretty. American icon AOL is ending dial-up service. While the sound of dial-up is nostalgic for a lot of people, it's important to remember for a lot of rural people, that's kind of the only inexpensive option. The Air Force seems to be interested in buying cyber trucks for target practice. Goldman Sachs indicates that U.S. consumers will be paying 67% of the cost of Trump's tariffs by October. This will include the tech products people want for Christmas. And now on to space. The Perseid meteor shower is reaching its peak. The glare from the moon is troubling viewers, but you can still see some of it streak across the sky. A Chinese group is working on a method of turning lunar dust into bricks, and a Canadian company is working out the finer points of growing food on the moon. Meanwhile, in the United States, there's lively debate over the shape of the Earth. Indications are that the Trump administration is still trying to move forward with a plan to destroy orbiting carbon observatory satellites. That's a move that would harm everybody from farmers to climate researchers. Much like the Bureau of Labor Statistics, it seems to be providing information he doesn't like. A paper suggests a warp drive is possible, and they even have a physical model idea. Warp travel or something equivalent is something necessary for effective deep space travel. Even if the information in the paper is correct, it would still take decades at a minimum before we could engage and really do it. Yes, Star Trek fans, if you thought that was a reference to Picard and Janeway, you've hit it. That was Pike. For non-Star Trek fans, different captains have different phrases for going to Warp Factor 1. Now it's time to talk about the developing climate crisis. Researchers, scientists, and activists are slamming what is being called a made-to-order climate report for the Trump administration. The response is coming in the form of everything from debunking the paper to comparisons to Stalin. Heat waves affecting the U.S. and Europe are expected to continue. The worst coral bleaching on record for reefs in Western Australia has occurred. Glaciers in the U.S. and Europe are melting at an unprecedented rate. This whole section of the show is beginning to sound like the montage of news clips that plays depicting the before time in a post-apocalyptic movie. In the world of animals, two bald eagles wound up in a dispute and their talons became trapped together, leading them to fall from the heights they were at and slam into the pavement. Ultimately, neither eagle survived. That's not some allegorical commentary on the current situation in the United States. It happened in Maine, and caregivers tried everything. Marine researchers found a deep-sea ecosystem of chemosynthetic life. It seems like the whole ecosystem is running off methane. Chemosynthetic life produces its own food, using energy from chemical reactions rather than sunlight. These kinds of discoveries indicate life may be present on planets we consider incapable of supporting life. Colorado is building the world's largest wildlife overpass to protect animals and motorists from colliding on a busy freeway. In health news, a rise in dengue fever across the Pacific is being attributed to climate change. Dengue is incredibly painful. I know somebody who had it. He normally describes it as one of those things that probably won't kill you, but you wish the entire time that it would. 
Trump's former Surgeon General is blasting the decision to end mRNA research. The Legionnaire's disease cluster in New York is up to 90 cases with three lost. Flesh-eating bacteria cases are popping up along the Gulf Coast. COVID-19 vaccinations are estimated to have prevented 2.5 million deaths worldwide, according to a new study. The biggest impact appeared during the Omicron wave. 11,000 bottles of blood pressure medication have been recalled, so that might be something you want to check out. There's promise in research pointing to lithium deficiency as being a critical point in the onset of Alzheimer's. The research has a ways to go before it'll make an impact, but there might be hope on the horizon. Now let's dig up the past a little. Researchers seem to have found tools on an Indonesian island that date to around one million years ago. The discovery is likely to rewrite timelines of migration or timelines of evolution. We just aren't sure which yet. A team of maritime studies archaeologists from East Carolina University discovered what looks like four shipwrecks off the coast of North Carolina. One of them may be the long-sought-after privateer ship named La Fortuna, R. matey. Archaeologists are indicating that after the eruption at Vesuvius, Romans returned to Pompeii and stayed for centuries. Geochemical analysis was used to trace the origins of the famous Viking treasure known as the Bedale Hoard. Some of the silver originated in modern-day Iraq and Iran. That's a pretty clear indication of massive trade routes. And now on to oddities. The remains of a British researcher who was lost in Antarctica back in 1959 have been found in a glacier. Elon's AI program reportedly responded to a question on his social media site by saying, quote, Yes, violent crime in D.C. has declined 26% year-to-date in 2025, hitting a 30-year low per MPD and DOJ data. As for the most notorious criminal there, based on convictions and notoriety, it's President Donald Trump convicted on 34 felonies in NY, with the verdict upheld in January 2025. I'm sure Trump is going to love that. And now on to a little explainer for this week about chemosynthetic life. Chemosynthetic life refers to organisms that obtain energy not from sunlight, like plants do through photosynthesis, but from chemical reactions, usually involving inorganic molecules. This process, called chemosynthesis, allows life to exist in environments where sunlight never reaches, such as the deep ocean, underground, or beneath ice-covered worlds. How Chemosynthesis Works In photosynthesis, energy from sunlight is used to convert carbon dioxide and water into sugars. In chemosynthesis, the energy source comes from chemical reactions, often oxidation of molecules like hydrogen sulfide, methane, or ferrous iron. Organisms use these reactions to convert carbon from carbon dioxide or methane into organic compounds that fuel their growth and survival. For example, In deep-sea hydrothermal vent ecosystems, bacteria and archaea oxidize hydrogen sulfide from vent emissions to produce sugars. These microorganisms form the base of the food chain, supporting tube worms, clams, crabs, and other specialized species that thrive in complete darkness. Where Chemosynthetic Life Exists on Earth Deep-sea hydrothermal vents, discovered in the late 1970s, these sites host ecosystems entirely dependent on chemosynthesis. Cold seeps, areas where hydrocarbons like methane naturally seep from the ocean floor. Sulfur-rich caves, such as Mexico's Cueva de Villa Luz, where sulfur-eating bacteria thrive. Underground rock formations, microbes live kilometers below Earth's surface, using minerals as energy sources. Why chemosynthesis matters. Chemosynthetic life is significant for two major reasons. Biodiversity and adaptation. It shows life's ability to adapt to extreme conditions, including high pressure, high temperature, and toxic chemicals. Astrobiology. It expands our understanding of where life could exist beyond Earth. 
Worlds like Jupiter's moon, Europa, and one of Saturn's moons have subsurface oceans and may host hydrothermal vents, making them prime candidates for chemosynthetic life. In short, chemosynthetic life proves that sunlight is not the only energy source capable of sustaining ecosystems. Life can thrive in total darkness, powered purely by the planet's own chemistry. And now on to the question and answer portion of the show. Help! One of my friends is convinced that there are gorillas that escaped captivity during a hurricane that are living in the wild in Florida. Is there any truth to this? Your friend is not alone in this belief because a video claiming this went viral. There is no historical record of any group or single gorilla living in the Everglades, which is where the video claimed. There is also no reporting of a gorilla, much less a pair, escaping captivity during Hurricane Andrew. Florida has some monkeys, not apes. Dana, could you tell us a bit about how making rhinoceros horns radioactive might save the species in the wild? It's a cool program. So what they're doing is taking a radioactive isotope and embedding it in the rhino's horn. The radioactivity isn't enough to harm the animal, but makes the horn radioactive. So later, when people try to take it through customs, it sets off alarms. There's an added bonus that some of the people who buy poached rhino horns want it to turn it into a medicine. Well, nobody wants radioactive medicine. The pilot program works so well, they're trying to figure out how to use it for other species. Can you say anything about the theories that Harris won? We had a bunch of questions about this this week. I've actually been keeping track of some of those. Some of them are interesting theories that lack evidence necessary to make such a big claim, and some are really nothing more than claims. Bill might do something on them at some point. As far as me, I like following them because it's interesting to see how data gets interpreted at times. If a hard piece of evidence ever shows up, I'll definitely bring it to the show. I have to ask, why do you like the Ankylosaurus? That seems like a weird one. Well, my favorite dinosaur changes over time. So why the Ankylosaurus right now? Well, Bumpy, really. There's an animated Jurassic Park, and there's a nice dino named Bumpy. I think it's cute. I'm not sure why you care about space. We keep destroying this planet, and I don't think we'll ever make it off this planet. Besides, so far, there's nothing in space. I'm wondering how you can remain hopeful we reach the stars or for that matter, even care about NASA when our climate is looking the way it is. First, literally everything is in space, but I can give you a philosophical and a pragmatic reason. First, the philosophical, we're humans. We're creatures that demand comfort unless we meet a major challenge. I think if we don't strive to leave this planet, we're guaranteed to destroy ourselves. The pragmatic. Do you know what space travel requires? Water purification, atmosphere purification, living in the most inhospitable lands. If we go down the road of the climate collapsing, NASA tech will be the thing that keeps small pockets of humanity alive. Maybe we'll do better the next time around. Which brings us to this week's quote. This week's quote is attributed to James Kirk. There's no such thing as the unknown, only things temporarily hidden, temporarily not understood. So that's all the data we have to date. Hope you enjoyed it and hope to see you again soon.